I apologize for the late posting of this video. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Leah and this video is my first ever Christmas in July collab. This is being hosted by Sarah from Jujube DIY and Jackie from Crafting in Mimi's World and we're crafting pastel gingerbread DIYs. I left links for this playlist and both host channels in the descriptions below. I thrifted this at Goodwill last year for 50 cents, brought it home, gave it a makeover. It was all real dingy looking, and I used it for peppermints. But now I'm going to make over again into a gingerbread. I'm going to go over this sitter section because I know I want to take out the red and green. The white's okay, so I'm going to try my best to paint just around this section here. I'm going to get as close as I can to the edge. And this is my mixture of one part hazelnut Waverly chalk paint and one part khaki apple barrel paint. About halfway into painting this, I realized, why am I trying to keep that inside the lines? Because I want to go around here with either puff paint or Preferably my spackle mixture if I can get it to work this time. And you'll notice I went with more of the gingerbread color. I'm going to try mixing some this Ceramcoat leaf green with some white. And I'll try to go about a one to one ratio in case I have to mix up some more. I think it needs more white. So let's add that in. That'll make it about a two to one mixture. It's a little bit of a minty color. So we'll go with that on the holly leaves. I'm going to kind of load up my brush on the tips because those pieces stand out. And that'll be that. Like so. I can live with that. I like it. I've got a few places that I need to hit with some more of that gingerbread color that I mixed up. I'm going to use baby pink, one of the berries, and go over the tops of those. And we'll get the leaves and berries all the way around. And then I'll also touch up the paint on those um, gingerbread places that needs more paint. I didn't film it, but I used white puffy paint to go around those indented places on the bottom of the sleigh. I have Dollar Tree Lightweight Spackle that I'm going to be mixing with some paint. I'm going to go baby pink. Swirl that in. I'm going to use my star tip on a bag for this. Basically to get your bag ready to do some spackle icing. Take a Ziploc bag, cut a little bit off the end, right on one of the tips, and then add in your little metal tip. Now to fill the bag, you're going to want to roll it over your hand. And get it all open all the way to the bottom so you can load it without having a lot of air pockets. So go right down on top of that metal tip. And I'll pull it up. You want to get any that's trying to run over to the other corner. Go ahead and push it over. You don't want to put pressure on it yet until you're ready to start decorating. A little twist at the top of the bag. 
I'm going to go around this area here, try to do some little stars. So you can see what areas I'm going around that right around the um, the body of the sleigh that I painted gingerbread. It's look like it's got some frosting around that. And I'm going to go ahead and finish up with this and I think it'll be done. This DIY is a little lengthy because of all the detail. My sister gave me this birdhouse quite a while ago and I'm going to be turning it into a gingerbread house. The NASCAR is out. I'm going to give it a good cleaning and then give it a fresh coat of white paint so I don't have any of those dark colors showing through my base coat of gingerbread color. I decided to do a custom color. I took the Waverly Chalk Paint in Hazelnut, the Apple Barrel Paint in the color Khaki, and I mixed them at a one-to-one -one ratio to get this color. I have some candies that I got from Amazon, well, and cookies. Since these macaroons are kind of large, I'll put them around the house like little hedges. Oh, they're a good size for that. And I'm going to go ahead and put those on before I do the windows to give me a clear plan of where I'm actually going to position those windows. Oh, that worked out just great. It took one of each color to go down the side. I'm going to use my low temp gun. Now for the front, while the glue was heating up, I was checking out how many I could get across the front. If I go with a third, I don't have enough space for a door. Well, actually, I can do that. Make it look like a little walkway. Yay! I'll do that. I decided to go ahead and make the doors and windows. And I'm going to use these giant craft sticks from Walmart. I thought that was a good width for a door on there. I'm going to go up above this hole where the peg was. About two and a half inches I think will get it. And I'm just going to use my scissors to cut that and try to get it as straight as possible across. Did I get it? Let's see. Mm, that's a little crooked, but I can fix that. Stick that on and then move it to where it's straight. Now the round part here, I want to turn into a window, but I'm going to use something different from the craft stick. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the side, get my windows going over here, and do, I guess a square. See if that's square enough. Yeah, I like that size. And I'm going to do three more of those. Now I'm going to paint these before I put them on. I want them to paint them. Want to paint them yellow to look like there's light showing through. My lightest yellow is Daybreak by Folk Art, and I am just about out. But if it's enough to cover. Those four little windows, that'll be enough for me. Now, also on the windows, before I glue them on, I'm going to do some pieces of skewers to frame them out and do the little cross pieces on there. So first I'm going to paint the skewer. And I'm using Folk Art Baby Pink, one of my favorite colors. And I think one will be enough. 
But to be on the safe side, I'll go ahead and do two. After I paint over the skewer, which I'm going to leave a little bit at the end. I should have left the sharp end. But I'm going to stick it down in some styrofoam to dry. I've cut pieces for the sides and the middle of the window all the same length. And then I cut the top and bottom a little bit longer. Put a couple little dots of glue. Just a tiny bit. Put that skewer down. Now we'll go to the side with a little glue. Get lined up with the other one. Now for those edges. Now let's go down the side here. Yeah, a teensy amount as I can teensy as I can get it to top and bottom. Lay it down, make sure it's not gonna stand away from the house. That's a lot of work for a little tiny window, and I've got three more to go. I'm going to try to camouflage some of that hot glue with puff paint. Make it look like snow on the window sill and the tops of the windows. That's about all I can think of to do with that. I am ready to put the windows on. They're all dried. And I want to have a pretty good space in between the little macaroons and the bottom of the windows because I want to try to create some flower boxes. That four is right at the edge so I'm going to come in to about three and a half mark for the window here. Right there. I've put frosting down the peak of the roof and around the front. So now I'm going to go on the back side too because I am going to make the back look pretty as well. Now I'm going to go down the side here. I later went back and added some little swirl multicolored candies onto the top of the house. I wanted to do a little pattern up there, but it was already patterned and textured, so that didn't work out for me. I'm making flower boxes for the window. I'm cutting pieces of straws, paper straws, and gluing some little tiny flowers on the straw. And then I'll be gluing that underneath the window. Tip this back. Some glue under there. Then add my straw. Since my flower boxes aren't showing up very well, I cut some more pieces of straws and what I'm going to do is try to make it even with the swirl pattern that's up above it to make it look like a wider box. I'm still looking a little plain on the sides. It's funny that I got winter snow and spring flowers together. <laughs> it's a gingerbread house. Anything goes. So what I'm going to do, first I want to cover up some more of the glue. The hot glue with the white puff paint. And then I'm going to draw some patterns around. I want the back of my gingerbread house to look cute too. So I took out these stickers. I'm going to Take this one that just has a little pink and green. It's got that tiniest bit of red and green there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over his bow tie, the white, 
puff paint. I'm just going to do dots, two dots, and then kind of connect them together in the middle. I thought I done messed up. There we go. I'm also going to use this Christmas tree that's pretty much pastel. I'm going to go right over the dark green that's on there with some little dots. I'm going to take out my pastel Posca markers and take the light pink and go over the gingerbread guy's smile. Then I'm also going to go in between the white puff paint and make some little polka dots. And I'm going to let that dry good before I try to move it. Okay, I'm going to be crafting one-handed because the clip broke on my ring light. There is my tree. And yes, the paint marker stayed on there. See? Let me see. So it's not rubbing off, but it's also not sticking on the surface. So I'm going to need to glue that down. And I also have the gingerbread man. Let's check him out. There's Mr. Gingerbread Man. He's going to be over here kind of sideways. And then I have snowflakes if I can find where my hand is. Where's the camera? Where's the camera? Oh, there. Snowflakes. <laughs> I'll put the foam down and I'm going to use a little bit of low temp glue on these and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished. And there is how it looks. The only thing left to do is to finish up the front of the house. And already I've painted the door pink and glued some pieces of straws on the side up to where it started rounding out. And now for that space above, I'm going to use some white garland. And this is very fuzzy. So I'm probably going to have to cut it down. Oh yeah. I want to put the ends in the top of the straws. Get those loose pieces off. See if I can find the ends, the wires. There we go. I'll give it a little bit more of a haircut where I see some long pieces sticking out. But I need to glue that in place once I've got both sides down and got it trimmed like I like it. And push that down into the straws. There we go. That's cute. That's cute. I've also made a wreath a little bit small, so I'm going to dot glue on each corner. Go ahead and stick it over, and then I'll have to camouflage with that wreath. I'm going to use these pink pearls that was used to be a bracelet that I broke. I'm going to use those for ornaments. I'm going to go with three of those at the bottom of the wreath instead of doing a ribbon or anything. And then I went one on the top of each straw on the sides of the door. And then I finished it with a little swirl candy. The last thing I'm going to do is add a Christmas tree in the front.
I'm going to use a shirt box to make a cone tree. Here we go. Rolling, rolling. Need a little smaller at the top. I'll roll it a little bit more in here. I'm just going to glue all the edges and roll them over. Let's go over to here and put some glue in. I'm going to pull out on that bit to make that bottom level come out. Now, of course, it's uneven. I'll have to even that out. So let's do that now. And then I'll glue down the final bits at the bottom after I get it to where it stands up straight. So that last little bit's going to go right in here. Now I'm going to cover the tree in some of this decorative fluff. Put down some glue right at the top and stick that down. And I can stick that fluff down into the top of the cone where there's a little bit of a hole there. Now I'm going to run some a line of glue. And this is my low temp gun. I'll put some more glue down in a strip and roll. There we go. Almost covered. I'm going to give this a little stretch because it is stretchable. But a little stretch so I can get it covered all the way up at the top here without having to piece it or anything. Glue on the cone. Hold that down and roll inward. And then this excess I've got here, I can just cut that off. Now at the bottom, I'll cut that as well. Excess I've got at the bottom, I'll just step up under underneath like so. I need some candies and I was going to use water bottle caps to um, cut out some air dry clay but I decided why not just paint the bottle caps and then I'll have to do is put some swirls on in pastel colors to look like kind of like peppermint swirls and the paint I'm using is the 2X Rust-Oleum Flat Bonds to Plastic in bold lettering, so we'll see about that. Y'all know I gotta fit in a trash or treasure whenever I can. I've been painting some of these caps while watching TV. I'm using the pastel Posca pens. I made a S curving toward that dot in the middle and then curving away from it, just a skinny S. Then I turned it a bit, made another S, and then another, and then I colored in every other space. Then I outlined, going right up the right up against those little ridges, mm -hmm. go in between each one of those that you painted and put an extra line. That's how I made the swirl candies. I'll just put a little glue on the back, and they're hollow in the back, 
but still you can put a good amount of glue on these sides and they'll stick just let the glue run down and kind of stagger the candies all over here's with all my candies on there and I turned the cone down over a glass jar for extra stability well stuff that back up under set that down on a jar nice and sturdy stable I have some little gingerbread men and women that came from Dollar Tree last year and they're felt stickers stickers on the back are pretty doggone strong but they got red and green womp 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 Ooh, that's got a miscut on it so what I'm gonna do is remove that and I'll do my own decorating the only difference in the boys and girls are just that little bit of extra felt there where her um, bow was sitting we'll go with puff paint and I'll do dots with that for buttons then do a little squiggle zigzag on the arms and legs I put one of the guys on the top of the tree like so glued him onto a skewer and stuck it down into that top and the other ones I'm just gonna put anywhere I've got some gaps in the candies and I'm just using the sticker Thank you all so much for watching my video today. I truly appreciate you stopping by. If you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button on your way out. And remember to check out the playlist with all the other great creators making pastel gingerbread. Until next time, bye-bye.